How to make everyone feel terrified. Did you know that there's only eight weeks until Christmas Day? That's right, 56 days left. You better get some presents quick, cause uh, uh you know what you can't wait for? Three, two, one. My clapping's getting terrible. Hello everybody, welcome to the stream. It is the b and stream today on this fine 6th of November. Sixth is a word that really cuts off. Sixth of November, 2023. I hope you're having a wonderful week and will have a wonderful week ahead of you. Um, my week's been, um, I had a lot on my plate. So I had, I juggled too many things. And the thing that fell off the plate due to commitments was uh, I wanted to do that bonus video for Shadow Man. And I couldn't quite get it out in time. Partially because I just really didn't get much time to play Shadow Man. And partially because, uh, did you know that there was like a very very big secret in that game like there's no achievement for it it's literally one of those things where like you remember in like you'd be in like you know primary school or, like you know really young school you'd have a mate to tell you of this like oh dude if you do these like weird jumps in this one place and you, you like climb out of the map and you get this item and then you can you get this like secret weapon that's actually the case more on in that in that bonus video but uh, i didn't even know about that so um, but this is not a Shadow Man video, this is a me hopefully turning on Tomb 3 and jumping to it. And you're probably going to hear desktop noises before the video kicks in, which is a little unfortunate. Yeah, so <laughs> the splash screen didn't display, but hopefully the rest of it does. Um, yeah, we be playing Tomb Raider 3 today. I think this is the same core design logo. Uh, but yeah, Tomb Raider 3, I had played the previous two on the channel in previous years, like, I mean, it's been, if it's not, if it's not quite three years yet, we're very, very close. Also embrace the screen resolution change every time a full motion video comes up. Um, but yeah, this is the, the third Tomb Raider, uh, back to back <laughs> November, October Tomb Raider, uh, sessions. Uh, I really, really enjoyed Tomb Raider 1 the first time I played it. Tomb Raider 2, I also really, really enjoyed. Um, and then I started to get into that terrible mindset of binge the franchise, which means my opinions on all of them started to blur into each other at this point. And while I can safely say I have played and beaten Tomb Raider 3, I can't tell you a lot about how much I actually liked it. Other than I did really like the improvements. Uh, never mind the media. Check it out. Antarctica. I've not been there. I've been seeing terrifying TikToks of uh, people climbing Mount Everest. I, don't, I never want to climb up Mount Everest, bro. I'd prefer to go to Antarctica. Myself hoarse on this radio every day. It's just the weather dumps on us frequently here. And maybe my transmission doesn't get through. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> It's all going swell, sir. Watch out. Get the bit up. Get it out. Get it out. At least oh. Oh. <laughs> at least the live leak logo hey, isn't in the corner. Dude, legit like machinery belts. That's e almost as terrifying as Mount Everest. Quirty keyboards? Ooh. Think you better come and check out site two. Site two. Blow through it. Find more meteorites. <laughs> nah, something a little younger than that. Ooh. Oh, no. Billy. You know, the famous Antarctic and Moai statues. This place is a busy history. <laughs> and there you go. Some some weird cross. Uh now, like all Tomb Raider games, let's start well. Yeah, let's start with Lara's home. Welcome back to my humble abode. Feel free to take a look around. Now, there's a couple of things still left to do in Lara's house as opposed to the other games. Um, but yeah, this one, it blows my mind a little more as we keep going on. And while I am very aware of 
the differences between all these games and particularly you know like this one is brand new for two new features right off the bat you can uh sprint there's a sprint bar on the top right and you can certainly leg it as well as also do this wonderful jump at the end and you can duck and crawl which we'll get into a bit um but uh on top of that it's just like you know some fun graphical developments like a, a bunch of nicer colored lighting and other kinds of things like that uh let me see if i can remember how to get to some of these little secret rooms in lara's house uh lara's house uh keeps going under makeovers all over the place as well as also lara is wearing uh, a different outfit just for you know well actually she wears different outfits in each world just kind of like tomb raider 2 in fact this game is probably very very similar to tomb raider 2 it's got the same voice actress um still got lara's house which uh disappears after this game rip tomb raider 4 uh here's a book that you can actually interact with you know, like you pull it and it turns off the fireplace uh so but uh but yeah i um yeah this game it's been a while and i can't unlike the other ones unlike tomb raider 2 where i can kind of go like oh you know i'm really hyped for like this part coming up I've really only got, like, general sentiments with this one, which is a bit of a shame, but hopefully we'll get through it, and then I can actually uh, understand and describe more about, ooh, I remember this part. Ooh, I remember this part. Um, that's not to say I'm wading through it blind. I'm certainly uh, prepping myself a little bit just so I don't wind up, um, you know, wandering back and forth all the time. Uh, but it's been, like, a week since I prepped myself, so... Uh, so the trick, I think, with what you gotta do here is that there is a switch, but you gotta leave this area. This is the box. So if we pull this box a bit back out, we've got that other box behind us, allowing us to pull this one once more out. Then we're able to push it over to the side and, and you know, leave this area because there's something behind here. I love this roof as well. This whole, like, section here. Very, very curious. There you go, so you can see how you can leave in that direction. Um, but yeah, if we activate this, this activates a door right at the bottom of the house. So we got a bolt. Uh, we head down here. Thank you, man. <laughs> What's his name? Alfred? <laughs> That's just the name of every, like, butler. With enough time, you can bolt your way down in here. These are some flares, just like in Tomb Raider 2. Just helps you view things if they get a bit dark. It's not too dark yet. Oh, it's a little dark around this corner, but nah. Lara's got a bit of an aquarium going on. As well as there's a box here. Everyone likes a good box. Uh, but yeah, no, my week's been, been a little... A little chuck full of things and i would like to describe some of it while wandering around a bit here and uh hopefully we get through the tutorial so i guess the big thing um for me personally this week has been uh i've been uh i think actually the week before there's also just some invisible glass here which i guess makes sense since there's a difference between the the water and not um it's a very curious kind of you know kind of visual going on here as well as little Aristocrates, Mephistopheles, Socrates, Gilgamesh. <laughs> I don't know which uh, one of these is not like the others. So climbing up through the ceiling, you actually can jump down into your little aquarium. It's tainted now. But I like this little watery area and and the sand and this game this game looks fairly nice even though yes it is Tomb Raider 3 yes you can still see the I don't know where the thing I was grabbing is I thought it would have showed up here I'm gonna go back for air because otherwise I die and then I gotta walk all the way around here again but I was fairly certain there's a uh, an object you can actually grab right here. 
Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't control the camera, Twitch. I'm sorry, Twitch. Hey, literally all women have it, okay? It's covered. It's fine. Um, yeah, I swear I was looking for a little key. But I guess I must be very blind. Or it just magically doesn't appear until you do something else? Hmm. I must be going out of order. Maybe we'll do a double check. I should be able to see it from outside. Very strange. You may be going, there's a key in, in the Lara's house level. Uh, yes. Yes, there is. Either there or there was a switch, like, right here, and I've just missed it completely. Nah, it doesn't look like there's a switch. I don't believe they did the book thing twice, although I like a collection of books and just a lovely couch to read by the, you know, the underground aquarium. I, I mentioned I want, like, an underground, like, tunnel, and uh, an aquarium in that would be super sick, so... Uh, I don't think this opens this permanently, so I might be caught out. I might have to do the, the whole sequence again from the top. Let's go into the gym. Those okay, Lara, give us. I don't actually run everywhere. Give us the uh, the lowdown. Walk button down. I won't fall off, even if you try to make me. Yep. Go on, try it. I'm trying. I'm trying. If a jump is too far. Other than that, it's mostly the same the controls, and to some degree, it's the same level design. Walk to the edge, so uh, to the white line. Lara forward, can. And I'll climb up. Can I... Uh, oop. There you go. No, no. Good enough. Good enough. If I do a running jump, I can make a jump like that. No problem. Walk to the edge with the white line until I stop. Then let go of walk and tap backwards to give me a run up. Press forward and almost immediately press and hold the jump button. I won't actually jump until the last minute. Thank you, Lara. Thank you, Lara. Okay. This is a huge jump. So do a running jump hey, exactly uh, as before. Very, very Except wide jump this time. Air, uh, but yeah, the, the for the most part, the you know, all the jumps and stuff, all virtually the Excellent. same. The newness of it comes from... Uh, Try to bolt up here. Well, this Press is still an old mechanic action. of shimmying across I ledges. I can't climb up because the gap is too small. But press right, and I'll shimmy sideways until there is room. There you go. Then press forward, and I'll climb up. Well done. If there's a long drop and I don't want to hurt myself jumping off, I can let myself down carefully. Next, I'll show you my crawl. First, vault onto the block. Now hold down the crawl button. This will make me crouch down. And keep holding it while using the direction. Yeah, so this is the new the mechanic. Basically, Lara end, will turn around uh, and drop me off the ledge. crawl through Make a tighter gap and you can climb up and now down. <laughs> Off Push ledges while crawling, to get to those so you don't really have to. Places, you don't have to be limited by that. Uh, Lara Let's also has uh, the sprint, Walk as we've mentioned, frame, as I've mentioned before. Uh, there's also this monkey so bars as a new feature. Now looking up, there weren't any monkey bars in the previous bars. games. These look like fun, and they look like fun. The it's a very, very nice. And she she just sways from side to side there. Now use the directional buttons to maneuver across. They're pretty Don't normal monkey bars. Well, I feel like there's this weird trend of uh, games in the late 90s doing monkey bars all over the place. Right. Let's sprint. And Push finally, the sprint. And hold down the sprint button. When I reach the white line, press the jump button. Okay. So you can Fancy do that kind swim? of. You can do that kind of oh. jump. Uh, but yeah, that's basically the the controls. Nothing really too, um, you know, too strange about it. Uh, the jump button and the direction They've still got the swimming, the as before. It s Swimming never changes in the Tomb Raider, because what else can you do underwater? Um, oh, I still eh. love her... Eh. <laughs> Let's go and play outside. Is this the button I needed all along? Ooh, different button. But I actually might have been the one I needed. Uh, okay, let's, let's bolt it. Let's... Spring our way. That's right near the entrance. Uh, da, 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 da. But I love this idea of like hiding secrets and stuff in this just tutorial, basically. There 
There you go. Pull this lever. I think what you've got to do is that you've got to wait for the lever to come back up. Because it opens the door behind you and this... Oh boy, you're right in the way. It opens this door right behind you and then it just shuts like really, really soon. So you just got to bolt your way through it. Uh, what we got in here is uh, Lara's collection of items from the other games. Here we have... Uh, the pieces of the Skion uh, from the first game. Here's the dagger from the second game. Uh, there's the golden mask, which was uh, the Tomb Raider 2 expansion. Um, which one was this one? I think this was in the Tomb Raider 1 expansion. Was it? Maybe. As well as also she uh, mounted a T-Rex head on a wall. Very, very nice. Um, yeah, no, oh, cool trophy collection room. Very, very neat. Let's open this door. What a chocolate bar texture of a door we got going on here. That might be the button I need as well. I think. No, maybe that's just a button that activates the door and it just didn't want to activate for a hot second. Uh, she's got some other... No, not really. If you want she... to look around, press and hold the look button. Then press in the direction you want to look. Oh, thankfully that door is still open. But the key, the key is still lost. So, we'll hold off on that just for the moment. There's still the outside. I know, right? I mean, just like Tomb Raider 2, you know, we got both, both sides of the house. Um, after shooting all these people outside her house at the end of the second game, uh, fortunately, uh, she cleans up very well. So check this out. This is the, the secret. This hedge maze, which was open in the previous game. Oh, I guess I picked up the key. When did I do that? Okay. Greetings, Blub. How's it going? This key actually opens up, uh, this little room in here, allowing us to go hey, through I like the hedge the maze. This. You overslept in the one course and to you jump need... on, Oh walk no. Up to the vehicle and press Hopefully the catch up button. soon. You did uh, the three friends that go to the course with me. Oh, everyone slept in. Mutual sleeping in. Uh, we have a uh, little quad bike section. Pretty much quad bike controls kinda like the quad bike in the second game, but it is a lot easier to control this time. It just feels so much more responsive. You've also got a turbo button so you can not accelerate as hard as he did before, but <laughs> dude, Lara tricked out this area of a house, man, I swear. Like, imagine living in a mansion, you just have like a quad bike circuit just right next to it. There's lots of fun, like, jumps and bumps all over the place involving the quad bike. Oh. Oh. Of course, it's boring, and we all already did it once. We don't actually have to go. As long as I got 4090 on my last go, so that's why it's 4090 there. Yeah, how fun that there's a little quad bike track here. And you gotta find this like weird little secret just to be able to participate in this quad bike track. Um, yeah, as long as I used to have like courses like that where like, you know, they were a bit bland and I just you know, study up in my own time rather than go into the lectures and stuff. Like sometimes it's just like. The lectures just don't convey the content in really an appropriate amount of time. Um, it's not a general rule. I wouldn't do it generally, but it happens. Uh, lastly, if we wander around the back side of the house, that's right. The obstacle course. Let's see how quickly the assault is, course can be completed. Oh, well, sorry, the assault Are course. Are you ready? It's still here. How quickly can I do it? <laughs> it's mostly the same as Tomb Raider 2. There's nothing really that weird about it. Um, I think I gotta do a long jump here. I got I gotta do the oomph sounds, otherwise, you know, you won't make it. Um Yeah. Oh, it's been ages since I've done like exams and stuff. This is uh how old I am, I guess. Uh we're back to three hour streams? Maybe. Maybe. The goal of this stream is to get to the end of the first world, and the second level is particularly long but the two levels afterwards are not as much uh <laughs> since i'm back to tomb raider 
Um, I guess the ultimate goal of the streams, or of the game, is, uh, well, there's seven more streams left of the year. So, uh... So, pretty much, uh, the goal is to try and beat the game. Uh, I expect the expansion to take two streams. I know, the last one... <laughs> The expansion to Tomb Raider 2, that was a notoriously long stream, and I don't think I've done any stream quite as long since. Like, I think that was... That and the Metroid Prime stream were the only two streams I ever did that went, like, beyond midnight, my local time. And I'm trying to not go beyond midnight, but, uh, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, Metroid Prime was earlier this year. Uh... Here's, a, here's an interesting thing to know. So I started playing Metroid Prime, and literally, like, in the week that I played it, um, Nintendo announced the remaster and released the remaster, like, immediately on the Switch. Um, I guess it's not as coincidentally since I've been playing these games, but since I played Tomb Raider 2, uh, they have announced a Tomb Raider 1, 2, and 3 remake uh, coming out, and it includes all the expansions as well, so all that, like, extra content... Coming out February 24, I think, next year. There you go. See, now you gotta do this crawling part here. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, it's the most amazing coincidence. I love how Lara's guns are just down it, you know. Now, the one thing you're gonna hate compared to the last two games, they changed the sound effect on, on Lara's pistols. They sound much more beefier, but it's also like, ah, uh, there's something kind of fun about how kind of flat they sounded before. <laughs> so you gotta shoot all the targets. The triangle but oh yeah. Great. Isn't this where you shoot all your targets? You just come in from the opposite angle? And most importantly, the best target of them all. For England! Hey, I beat it by 20 seconds. Nice. It was just my last time, that's it. <laughs> I just love he comes out here with the freaking <laughs> tin shield and you're like, yeah, get him. Players just wanted to do this all along. <laughs> very, very nice. So what we got? We got, you know, quad bike, shooting the elderly. This game's got it all. We've only, we're still in the tutorial. So, but fortunately, the tutorial doesn't go much longer. Let's, uh, open the gate now and, uh... Now it's time for our third adventure. Our third adventure, if you will. Um, open the gate and, uh, realize that Lara literally lives in isolation. And she'll just make it on foot. Uh, disregard the line that is on Lara's, uh, left side of her body here. Um, let's start a new game. So this game starts off, uh, in the India, uh, jungle. India, I know, right? What a very curious place. Um... Or, uh, I, th I think on another stream I was like, oh, that tr they want to call themselves Bharat. I'm like, at the time of this game, it was India. I'm committing to India. Uh, also, just want to note, uh, if you're playing this game on PC, I'm playing it on PC. Um, the This game is a bit curious to play. I was playing the previous games using a tool called... Oh, oops. There's some secrets up on these ledges, and I know that if you lean left here... You can definitely get that. Did you see that boulder? That boulder, just chilling there. Hold on. This is my favorite boulder in the game. The Bharat name change. It's controversial within India. Yeah, so we'll commit to India because this game came out. Ah, uh, second one with a H B H A R. I think that's it. Look at this boulder. Lame boulder just stops there. <laughs> um, it's India in this game, and I don't think anyone even reads out the name. I think it's just there. Ah. Oh. Dang it, there was a secret right there. Oh well. Uh, so, oh, oh, I should also note, uh, this game uh, has a secret level. If you collect, out of the 72 secrets in the game, if you collect 59 of them, which is not 80%, it's like a little more, <laughs> one more than that. Um, if you collect 59 of them, when you beat the game, it shoves you into a, bo uh, a bonus level. I am certainly not going to get that normal way, so instead, at the end of the game, I'm just going to load a, uh, the save. Thank you, Stella. Appreciate you. You got the best walkthrough on the internet. Um, I'll try my best to find as many secrets that I know of, but 
yeah, sometimes it's just like, uh, you know, trying to find 59 of the 72 secrets, it's tricky. And all you need is a save game that's just right there at the beginning of the, you know, the bonus level if you want to ever play it. Um, but yeah, so, yeah, one thing to note about playing this game on PC, you can see, unless YouTube is killing the compression if you're watching on YouTube, um, you can see that there's rain. Actually, it's very clear up the top there. The rain is impossible to see as you raise the resolution. And uh, for the previous two games, I was... Or actually, for Tomb Raider 2, because the first game was just running on DOSBox. Um, I was using a tool called Pexodos Patch, which is a pretty neat tool. It, like, it basically smooths out so many of the parts of the game um, on how it renders and presents. So it runs a bit nicer on modern PCs, as well as also letting you bind... Uh, keyboard. What is with the wind? Lara, you got a wind sock. Um, watch out, this is... Like, it's not quicksand, but it's like... It's just thick mud. And it actually gets deeper as you go further out. So that's what these little, you know, kind of sticks are warning you about. It's like, yeah, you can't go over there. If it looks like you can go over there, that's because that's the end of the, the, the level. If you watch a speedrun of this game, they figure out how to actually get over there and uh, beat the level in one minute. I'm not doing that though. Let's uh, pause the game and uh, let's commit a save. Um, problem with Pixado's patch, um, particularly in this game. Oh, oh, you jerk! Don't you dare steal my health! I'm gonna be shooting every monkey on sight. I swear. Um, also, uh, the health is uh, a green plus a green. It's not red cross. It's green cross. I don't think there were. Maybe there was a thing. Maybe Red Cross just really hated everyone using a red plus as the as like health indicators in every single game. And Tomb Raider was like, oh, let's let's jump on not wanting that one. Or it's the Steam release doing that. I should double check. Um, but yeah, if you're playing with Pexodos patch, um, the texture filtering is terrible looking. The easiest way to tell is just pause the game, look at any text on screen. You can see it says inventory at the top, statistics at the bottom. Um, if you're playing with Pexodos patch, the texture filtering is so bad. It's so off. It just looks terrible. Um, so the, the quick solution is, uh, we're running this directly using, uh, um, by the way, that switch opened this door, um, using a DG Voodoo to emulate an ATI 8500. That seems to do the job. Oh. You can tell it's happening. Oh. There it goes. Can't be a Tomb Raider game without a spike trap in the first level. Tomb Raider 2 has, like, that great wall level is great, but, uh... This one is really good. There's a lot of, like, dynamic... Like, the lighting is really, really moody in this one. Um... Very bright and colorful as well. This game just feels so much more atmospheric and so much more... Kind of moodier. I love these, like... Well, in the later level, they are... Actually, I think they might actually be piranhas. But the water drags you down and into there if you try and jump through here. Um, but, oh, it's... Uh, like, the coloring... The color grading is so good. So great. Jump through here. And we drop down. Stop! Oh! Everyone likes a good... I guess these are, like... Like Bengali tigers, are those of the kind? The very, very orange ones. They stand out so much in the jungle, but... You know, the only things I get to... Well, I got against them are these little monkeys that don't do much. You can hear the monkeys ages away. Monkeys aren't very strong, though. I, I love the, um, the... Just the single pixel particles for the, uh... For the blood as well. It's very funny. Um, oh, I love these god rays coming from the, from the leaves. It's so good. Uh, well, there's a boulder up there. I wonder what's gonna trigger the boulder. Oh boy. Oh, Lara, what are you jumping for? Oh. Here it comes. <laughs> What a fun boulder. This is that river again. Um, we're just a little further upstream. Uh, you could probably have jumped over there here right away if you wanted to. 
Um, but there's more going on over here as well. We'll see more of this level. Uh, so yeah, so my, my, my tip to you, if you're playing this game, uh, use, uh, like, if you got the Steam version, just play using, um, DG Voodoo. Set the graphics card to the API, because it seems to work better than the emulated device. The emulated device just doesn't have, uh, textures working at all, which is a bit of a shame. Um, and then, uh, if you want to do your input, use Steam. Just globally map, map the controller. It does the job. We are, we pull the lever to open a door. To open a door. Oh. Lion! That is not a lion. You can still do the, the jump roll, which is great. Um, oh, the other thing with the textures as well is that the health bars looked like lines in the Pex Auto version. Uh... So I, I opted to just, let's use DG Voodoo. The game looks a bit more normal. Um, interestingly, the game itself likes all your monitor resolutions as well, which is very curious for a PC game in 1998 to, to be like, oh yeah, 3840 by 2160, yeah, sure. It doesn't do aspect ratios properly, so you're sort of bound by any 4x3 aspect ratio. The music is so good. They're responding to that, you know, better budget. What this hole? Oh, <laughs> there's spikes in there. You put spikes in my hole. Ah, yeah, monkey. Also a feature that I'm glad they have when you pause the game, the music does not stop, it's just quieter. You can still hear it. It's still there. Yeah, very, very nice. Uh, I might have been picking up these green crystals, I didn't even mention them. Uh, in the PlayStation versions of these games, they've always had little save crystals. Um, for some odd reason, on the PC version of this game, they have brought the save crystals forward. But they're, they're blue in the PlayStation version, they're green in this version. And, uh, instead of giving you a save point, because you can still just save in the menu, you know, whenever you want. Um... Okay. Oh, I can climb up there. Interesting. Um... They just heal you a little bit, which is interesting that they're there. I assume the game was like, oh, we use these save points sometimes to, like, signal to the player. So it's a bit weird if they're just not there. Um... It is curious that on the PlayStation version you get to basically save anywhere because of that. I like this little fun temple we got going on here. Uh, but yeah, there's a... There's, <laughs> I, I just kept chatting about other things. Um, see, this is the power of uh, being able to climb, is that you can check out these little tiny gaps and grab the wonderful goodie, which is flares. Oh boy. Unfortunately, climbing, or rather crawling through tight spaces is very awkward. You turn very slowly, you got a, like, three-point turn. <laughs> you're, you're, uh... You're, you're steering to go forward, or better, I should have walked, I should have crawled backwards because then you get to the end and then you're like, oh, I gotta crawl out the other way, and uh, there's no flip. You gotta just turn. You just gotta turn. Doesn't come up a ton, but it comes up. Ooh. Get out of there. There we go. Oh. I think this is actually the way to proceed as well, or rather, the way to get out of being in the secret. Uh, yeah, yeah, people can play the game. Uh, well, I guess if you're on Steam, you can already buy these games, but uh, there's a remaster. It costs more than I'd like. Um, costs a fair bit. Uh, you do get the expansions, which is nice, uh, but... There is a little bit of a HD overhaul, but otherwise it just kind of looks like it'll be a straight port. Of course it costs more. Yeah, that's a that's a general problem. Like, this, it's been a while since I've seen, like, a remaster or anything that's, like, worth good. Yeah, yeah. There's so many remakes as well of games or remasters or stuff uh, these days. And, oh, the prices just kind of sting me a bit. Because if you're on PC, you know, I'm like, what stops you from using 
Digivoodoo. Oh, hey, we're back here. What stops you from buying the old game and using Digivoodoo and it just works like this? Literally, community support your old games. You don't have to sell your game and distribute it, but you can just be like, hey, yeah, you know, this game works fine on older machines, but... Um, or rather, what stops a, a game developer from just saying, please use Digivoodoo? Literal companies pulling the old stuff for- Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, like, the companies are like, mmm, money, mmm, and I know that's a little overly simplistic, but to some degree, yeah, no, they are sort of- I mean, everyone's a bit bleeding money, uh, these days. I actually saw a, um, a uh, bit of a tweet, but, uh, it makes sense. Where it's like, there's so many companies that have popped up, uh, these days, that are just like, l they're literally funded by investments. And just the fact that, like, interest rates have been super low, and they've just been like, you know, oh, I'll borrow the money and we'll totally be able to, you know, pay back that interest, you know, soon. And unfortunately, a lot of these companies don't make profits. But they do keep growing, which is very curious that so much of a, so many big companies are... Funded by a bit of funny money. So much debt. Someone just borrowed money and it's just like, yep, you just borrowed, you know, <laughs> hundreds of millions of dollars to create this company. Oh, what a bit of a jump. Now, I remember climbing up here going, ooh, what's up here? A slope. So, the slope is not where you want to go. There's a bit of a weird ledge over there. Shoot, that might be a curious ledge. Let's have a jump over there. Um, wow, are we already 13 and a half minutes into this level? And there's six secrets in this level as well, mind you. Yeah, whereas Tomb Raider 3, uh, there were, um, uh, only three secrets a level. This one, uh, we're back to, you know, some number. So you're just gonna have to check. There are, I believe, 18 levels in the game. 19 if you play the secret level. And 20 if you count Lara's house. Um, so this game's got... A chalk of content. I just want to climb up here. I just want to... Uh, just let me go up. Uh, there we go. Yep. They never said it was easy. I'm just going to crawl through. Crawling on through. All of that for a little bit of health. And that might be the worst ledge to try and climb back down on. So I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. Oh! I broke a neck. I broke it. <laughs> this level is literally called Jungle. Hey, you know, that's for green health. I don't need it. I don't need it. I'm on f relatively lots of health, anyways. We just need to climb up this away. Uh, but yeah, ah, uh, like <laughs> this is this is my uh, my bits of politics. But um, legit, we're gonna start seeing some you know some weird massive company shrinkages in the next few years. That's not like insider trading <laughs> or anything, but like legit, I'm like Netflix is like doing like crazy stuff, trying to like support this like ad viewing model, and then trying to like. You know, boil the frog. Oh, it's a bit dark in here. Too bad I got my handy dandy flare. Um, but yeah, they're trying to boil the frog a little bit by like, you know, gradually adding all these like, you know, ad supported. And I love the phrase they use, ad supported. It's like, uh, excuse me? I would like no ads. And I know you'd be like, I'll oh, just pay for it then. Oh, I can barely see. <laughs> I can barely see how I exit here. Um... I believe that was needed because now it opens a little gate all the way down the bottom. All the way down the bottom. <laughs> the little tiger has come out to, to greet us. Can I drop down here? Yes. Very nice. Uh, but yeah, no, I am like... Like, I don't invest. I don't really have like stocks in things. I guess. Um... But like, yeah, like, but yeah, I am, like, not very, not very confident about, uh, these big companies that haven't really been earning profits. They keep saying, like, oh, you know, the investments are, you know, 
satisfying everything, but I was like, okay, but the investments are investing, so either they're getting absolutely nothing in return, which, for some people, that's actually okay. You know. Hey, if you're a billionaire, I, you know, I wouldn't be upset if stuff is happening based on your investments, even if it doesn't actually make profits. You know, like, sure. If I was a humble investor, like, if, if literally, like, I, I don't consider myself, like, oh, oh, boy, I have a, <laughs> oh, boy, An interesting ledge and it drops back down somewhere where does this drop down i i actually i didn't check here last time um so uh now now i mentioned netflix netflix probably mm, turn up the price a little bit i think they will probably and maybe they do make a profit but they invest a ton they oh this was a secret the whole time not very very nice a little glowy a little glowy, if you will. Oh, more flares. Mmm. Eat them up. Eat up the flares. Don't actually eat flares. It's not very tasty. Oh, boy. I should have seen that. Where did I last save? Uh, oh, literally up here. Okay, cool. <laughs> and I managed to do that drop a bit nicer that time. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm a little doom and gloom about those kinds of companies where it's like, um, like Uber. Uber is a big one, I think. You don't actually... <laughs> yeah, don't... <laughs> I, that's, I know it's a stereotype of, like, Americans, like, falling for, like, the dumbest things, but it's like, oh, it, legit, like, you know. Not necessarily Americans, but there's probably someone out there, and legit, don't listen to anything I say. Or rather, just take it as my opinion and don't actually act on anything I say, but just be like, hmm, this guy said a thing. Um, legit, there are so many things that like I opinionate about, and hopefully people don't take them too literally. Uh, so once we're over on this side of the place, we've got this uh, river going on here. Which is very, very cool. And you can see it kind of starts here. I love this river as, like, you know, someone's going to be like, oh, you know, the river is, like, thematically, like, you know, about this or something like that. And I'm just like, I don't know, man. Cool river. I love me a cool river, man. Like, this game is really leaning on that point. You know, oh, oh, and I should also mention, I guess, something about the map geometry that you probably have noticed. Triangles. It's not just squares. They can subdivide the... the ground into triangles now it is still mostly squares but still kind of cool it's neat uh, I'm just swimming through that crack there I guess I am that's not a crack where am I gone oh a big tunnel that makes sense we got an open door. Um, but yeah, no, legit, like, things like Uber, um, uh, other alternative streaming services, um, things that don't, you know, don't have more than one product, uh, like, product, or, uh, if anything, all their products are relying on this kind of investment system. Legit, those are the ones that probably, you know, be a little wary about, because check the, you know, whether they actually do make profits as a, uh, as a public company, a lot of them will, you know, let you know, so. Uh, but legit, like, once people are upset about how much they can borrow, and how much they owe back because of that, uh, the investment's gonna dry up, and when the investment dries up, uh, who's gonna be buying, you know, Uber? Who's, who's gonna be funding Uber if it's not the investors? It's a little bit of a shame, I guess. Uh, but, you know, that's the way these big companies operate. Oh, look at that, a switch. That, uh, floods the water in the next room. We don't, like, I, I didn't check out the next room, but, uh, we jump back over to here. 
some lovely music to get you thinking about a puzzle. Uh, now, is this downstream to video games? Um, partially. Depends if the video game itself is driven by this kind of investor model. Lots of big video game companies are, um, you know, publicly traded. Um, so there is a degree of, yeah, it will hit everyone. I think it will definitely hit the ones that, you know, don't have a product. Uh, so the ones like, uh, not Nintendo, but games that rely on, um, particularly subscriptions or other kinds of less, you know, just buy it and move on kinds of models, uh, will probably be feeling it. And, uh, I think you'll probably see less and less of them, like, in the short term. At least if this comes to pass, if, if big companies are like, ah, oh, we can't invest in things anymore. Dude, this first level already has, like, caves, it's got waterfalls, rivers, tigers, what is not to love? There's a little bit of a bait and switch here, because it sort of looks like you can, like, go back there and you can get a triangle, but that actually exits out right to the beginning of the level out there. The piranhas, you tell, you can see the piranhas over there. As well as also the edge of the mountain sticking up over there. Uh, but that switch actually activates a little door in the floor here. And this leads us through another tunnel. Everyone likes a good tunnel. Um, yeah, no, I don't know. I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit, uh, wary about talking about investment bankman fraud got convicted he did all the charges every single one of them i never really like i never particularly followed um like what uh what was the the one what was it ft not ft ftx is that the company oh my gosh i'm i'm like i'm fairly out of the loop all i know is sentiments and uh i guess promising that you have an investment or a, a crypto investment firm oh legit as well like okay real talk i um i i've been running a knitter instance so that i can like view like twitter instances without having to go through all the um or twitter accounts without having to go through all the twitter you know tell uh telemetry and all that jazz and um and uh they've really been cracking down on um how to access the site so fortunately some guy uh is scraping a lot of you know guest sessions and all that stuff uh which helps run the knit instances oh, check it out uh, a key oh i grabbed it first i grabbed it first you didn't do it you pooed in the shoe i like this foliage up the top here uh this key by the way is i'm hearing him not seeing them. Oh, there's a tiger down there. Hi there, tiger. Um, you might recall that is like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> that That's the beginning of the level. Right there. So, the speedrunner, what he does is that he somehow manages to climb across the, the leaves here and jumps across the whole section without having to do any of it. Then he can just climb up here, grab the key, and you use the key right there in that door. It's a very crafty speedrun strat. And yeah, you know, you miss most of the level, but, you know, where's the fun in that, man? There's something cool just going down here and popping your key in. Um, but yeah, with the public knitter, I've realized... Oh, so, so I made my knitter public. I put it on the public list. Uh, which, uh, you know, is a little bit risky, I guess, but I've got enough precautions and safeguards in place. Uh, imagine playing the game for its content, not for the gold color of the timer. Oh, dude, yeah. Like, speedruns are cool, but at some point, you do lose the heart of the game. That's not to say speedrunning is bad. It's that speedrunning is separate. I should, <laughs> you know, never care to your game for speedrunners, because they're going to just ignore the cool stuff about your game sometimes. There's not an in-engine cutscene for everything. It's just... It's just one this level. Woohoo! Hello? Hello? What? What do you want from me now? Mm -hmm. Nothing no. Are you alright? Well, if you'd all stop, I might be just fine. Just a hundred percent. Just go! 
If you don't stop, who are you talking about? All you, hundreds of you, talking and chattering and breaking my brain up. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not quite sure where you're coming from, but I just want to know about the Infada artifact in the temple up there. <laughs> voodoo magic and all, huh? I don't touch the stuff myself. It's not voodoo. Look, is there anyone else here with you? Yeah, Randy and Rory. <laughs> Randy and Rory? Where? Dude, I would never trust working in a place if, I, if my name is alliterating with someone else's. I told him not. The sleeping bag looks like a, you know, like a cartoon bomb. You know what I mean? Now I doubt under half a ton of mudslide. Me. I'm leaving. Next bus out. This jungle is rooted enough rot into me. I'd offer the same advice to you, but you don't seem like the type to take it. To care if I said you're gonna die in there. <laughs> yeah. Die. <laughs> there he goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends on the game. It does it does indeed depend on the game. I would vibe to just this like synth sound right here. Tomb Tomb Raider it it somewhat depends on how much you're actually skipping. Uh this is my favorite part of the game by the way. Um you will constantly come across... Hold on. Where's he at? Oh, I thought there was one over here. There's one. There's just snakes. There's snakes everywhere. And you can't shoot them until you stand near them and they pop up. And if a snake bites you, it poisons you. And you can only cure poison by using a health kit. Fortunately, every health kit cures poison, but... Sort of forces you into, you know, using a health kit, so. The first three where you can walk on the air with the dual pistols. Yeah, there's a there's a bunch of broken things with really any game and a lot of games. But there's there's things like like uh I guess Spyro 2 is a great example where you can do that charge jump in the air. And as much as, you know, hey, you know, how many cool places can you end up with the charge jump? It does ruin the spirit of the game in some ways when you do break the game like that. And I generally try to, like, say, you know, like, glitchless is a little bit more pure of a game. But I don't want to Debbie down. I don't want to say you can't play, you know, games by not using glitches. As, oh, sorry, you can't play games by using glitches. It's, it's illegal. But I think, I think there's, like, something where... When you know that the developer is, like, caring about that, you know, kind of thing. I should probably save the game and then use a different save slot for, like, starts of the maps. Because I know at some point I'm going to accidentally just save in a balked state. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I'm falling to my death. You accidentally save instead of load. And now your save is kind of moot. Uh, I don't want to go up there because those piranhas are going to nibble on my teeth. I don't want to be toothless. So we'll go the other way. Seriously, they go fast, those piranhas. They should... They show up in other places. I'll give them a go then. Uh... But yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Running a public knitter... The... Oh, gosh, dang it. <laughs> Die, snake. Gonna have to burn a med... Uh, a medi pack. I forgot there was a snake around that corner. <laughs> Seriously, they just catch you out because you don't hear them. Not these like footstep noises, just mud noises everywhere. Get out of here, Marcel. You are not pooing in the shoe. Um, but yeah, running a public knitter, I realized how many bots there are like jeez guys <laughs> calm it man cool down with the bots the number of bots are like are just scraping various like crypto update tweets or well, like you know that's like all this stuff it's like this super obvious as well here's here's my tell pro tip if you're a bot uh like one change up when you request for things, it's super obvious when you keep committing to the same, you know, schedule. I've got, like, generic rate limiting as well, so you can only request one page per second. 
and 45 a minute. But even then, it's like, well, you know, hundreds of IPs. What can you do? It could actually have been 100 people. How would you know? And the answer is, because they all behave the same, okay? <laughs> you just watch your logs for a little bit. You can tell. They're all behaving the same. Um, uh, number two as well. Uh, they don't uh, load images, because obviously they're just curling the page. That's a, uh, so that's another pro tip. Just watch for, well, don't exclusively, because, you, you know, someone could just go like, oh, okay, I will randomize my pattern and load images. But, like, that's the, I guess the key gist is when, you know, when, when you program your bot, by the way, if you, if you hop down here and the piranhas just, look at your health go! It's gone. It's just full gone. Um, when you're programming a bot, it's like, you know, like, like, do you want me to know? If you don't want- well, sorry, if you want me to know, use the right user agent. Because if you're using Python requests, because this is the thing, it's that, like, if you're using Python- oh, get out of there. Kind of have to do the jump and then get into a bit of shallow, shallow ground here. Is there something over there? Nah, that's just a corner. Okay. Um, but yeah, legit, if you're using, like, Python request library, for example, the user agent which you send on every HTTP request is, uh, you know, Python requests. It's, it, you make it clear that you're using Python requests. Now, some people might ban certain user agents. They might be like, yeah, no, like, I don't want people to be using Python requests. So what people do is they fudge it. And they say, oh, no, I'm actually Mozilla Firefox. But, like, you can tell they're not because they're not loading the images. There's no setting in Firefox that lets you turn off the images. Alright, we gotta crawl quick to this door. Oh, get the- oh. I nibbled on my toenails a little bit. There we go. This level is mighty long as well, and there's kind of this bizarre trend of some of these levels in Tomb Raider 3 really being longer than you'd expect. Um, fortunately, I don't think any other game has levels this long. But Tomb Raider 4 has a ton of levels, so, hmm. <laughs> Doesn't exactly get, well, it gets better afterwards, because then Tomb Raider 5 is just a crazy short game. Um, so. Also, just want to add as well, Nitter has an RSS feature. If you're using Nitter, and you want to scrape tweets, use the RSS feature. If you want to scrape all tweets, host your own Nitter, please. Like, that, that's probably the way to go about it. Um, just because, like, you know, I've only got a limited amount of bandwidth, and, uh, there are some people, and also the, the tokens only last so long, you know. There's plenty of them, I shouldn't be running out any day soon, but, ooh, it's a bit of a far jump. If only there was a ledge that was a little closer to being able to climb up on something. Um... But yeah, like, you know, I, I, running a public instance and having, you know, like, web requests all the time, you gotta keep your eye out. Gotta make sure that it's, uh, not, um, uh, not a bit out of control. I like to think this is poop. But I know, I don't know, it's just mud. I don't know. There's a lot of these kind of like courtyardy areas in this game. They look great as well, like, yeah, you know, there's still blockiness and polygonal aspects to the level design, but it's like... The kind of, you know, attempt to really leverage that texture filtering style. Definitely, you know, it's paying off, it looks a bit better. And yes, yes, I, I, I should have mentioned as well, Lara wearing a classic outfit, just for, just for this, uh, first hub of the game. She only wore it for like... No, she wore it for a bit of the second game. This is a great place to save your game, as well. I like how this is above as well. This is above the, uh, the start of the level. Lots of fun verticality going on. 
Yeah, let's see if I can do this jump. Whoa. There we go. Uh, yeah, I don't know, there's a certain degree of, like, honesty with, like, using bots and scraping. I think the, the thing that I'm generally just against is all this, like, crypto stuff. <laughs> as much as, you know, like, I get the tech, and I, 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 I get it. But, like, oh my gosh, man. Like, there, there's so much, like, inefficiency with how people are, like, getting information about the crypto stuff. Just use someone's API, please. Don't just scrape Nitter. You're loading an entire website. Or rather, you're loading the website without the images. Which is just... Ugh. And then you're pretending to be Firefox, okay? Like... I get it, I get it, you know, you know. I've done it before, don't worry. <laughs> It's not illegal, but it's just like, you know, hey, I spot it. I can tell you're doing it. Dude, there's another snake down there. Snakes everywhere in this game. Other than that, though, I mean, you know, it's a nitter. There's a little bit of a... Literally this morning, there was a little bit of drama of a... Of a certain individual, um deleting or attempting to delete the wiki only to then find out that yeah the wiki is just I mean it's a github wiki so it's just a git repo uh not sure what he was trying to accomplish there other than um I think he was upset about his tendency to view knitter impulsively which is like yeah you know we should get that sorted out that's about it I don't have a ton to say about it uh, you know, there's like drama involving individuals. It's like, what do you say? Please, please improve th the self. There's lots of crawling, lots of like going around these like weird little angled kind of jumps. Oh, the monkey. Get him out of there. I don't want him. I like this little extra bit up here. Completely unnecessary. There's no items up here. It's just. Gives a little balance to the to the room, and then you got to crawl through more more gaps. Uh, hmm. This looks like a curious way to go. Oh my gosh! You've got me kidding. Listen, I just saved that. I just saved that. Give me a break. Give me a break. <laughs> Get out of it. You can at least get them before they get you. It's not just like you're guaranteeing a hit. We got some temple... temple? Some, some cave noises. And the second one got me, so... It's a bit... it's a bit for naught. Get them out of there. We don't want no snakes. right a little bit because that boulder comes that way and welcome to the the main meat of this level which is uh an actual well it's not really a tomb it's more a temple but it's close enough it's been a while hasn't it since an actual tomb tomb raider 2 ended in a uh, a wonderfully abstract level and i don't think this game does end in an abstract level but it definitely ends in a bit more of a, a combat -y level than you'd expect but I love how there's just this temple, and there's a there's a proper, like... Feels very Tomb Raider 1-y, just the way that this, like, whole area works out. Um, because pretty much, we're in this room, and, uh, first of all, uh, did you expect a boss? We gotta fight these massive, like... Kind of Guardian-type fellas. You can tell you're hitting them, because they bleed. You can tell you're not hitting them, and they got the sword shield, or shielded. They're apparently blocking the bullets because none of my shots are hitting the body past the bullets. So you just gotta dance around, but it can't crush you. And it's like, oh, okay, like, sure. I think if you dance around him enough, you can consistently be behind him like that. And you can see I'm making shots here. But I'm only using one pistol because I'm not turned the right way. It gets the job done. Hi there. Oh, okay. 
apparently the secret is just to play with the, the corners. You can't figure it out. He lets up every so often, so... Kill him, and he uh, falls over and then turns back into a statue. Just cash, you know. We got this green plum bob. It's like I'm playing The Sims. It's the real NPC right there. Uh, but you can see here that there are... Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> There's two spots for keys. We need to find two keys in order to get through this area. Uh, I believe down here, this is... Oh, I thought there was like a block you could push. Oh, is it this one? Yeah, it is this one. Yeah. So it's a cheeky block. Right there. You gotta be paying attention to spot like what's a block and what's not. And that's a wonderful sound to hear as well. The sound of a blow dart going off in the next room. Um, so I would like to describe what I've been uh, sort of taking a bit of extra time on. Um, oh boy, you've gotta be kidding, really? Did that go in? Oh, it did go in. Huh. Guess you can crawl under the blow the blow darts. I can't get you now. I think there are different height levels. I'm actually curious if these poison you. I think they might. Also, excuse me, there's just flares right there. Are we still shooting these across? Just gonna duck, I don't trust them. What are we looking at? What's what's going on up there? What? Look, it's just where the boulder was. I think we're good in this room, though. Shotgun. Everyone likes a shotgun. Or rather, the the cartridges, because I keep getting ammo for things that I don't have. Like, you know. I don't have it. Just health packs. We'll certainly get some weapons at some point. Who would even get those flares? Like, really? Really? Uh, so the bit I was working my time on is uh, I've signed up to do, to actually program a retro achievement set. There's a GBA, I, I mean, someone's gonna be like, oh, just, <laughs> I was gonna be secretive with the game, but then it's like, hey, you could probably just look it up. But it is a game that I would like to play on stream at some point because it's a game that I own and that's it. I don't particularly have crazy vivid memories about it, but it seemed to stay in my head. Like I remembered it as I replayed it to understand what to make achievements for. Um, and that game is uh, Dex's Laboratory Disaster Strikes for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, so keep, keep an eye out. I will play it at some point later. Um, but for now, it is, like, I'm making a retro achievement set. Um, and the curious thing about making a retro achievement set is, uh, like, how it easily ties in with... Also, you've got to wing the mud on this one. you just got to get to the end. It's like your air bar trying to conk out at the end there. Oh, oh, oh. Took a little bit. Took a little bit, and then I got this tiny little bit of air there. Um, making a retro achievement set is kind of curious. Now, I'm not, like, fully there in terms of the process. It's been mostly, um, yeah, it's a, it's a weird game. It, because it came out in 2001, which is the GBA launch year. And it weirdly, like, looks and runs pretty alright. Like, it's a, it's an isometric game, but it, like, uh... Wow. Yeah, the level design's a little whack, actually. Dang it. <laughs> got mud on me again. Uh, but it's effectively a collect-a-thon. You've got to collect things in every level, and then uh, eventually, once you've collected all the things, the game's done. It's not too long, but it's just got a bit of stuff, a bit of content, a bit of things to do. Um, I have never watched, really, Dexter's Lab as a kid growing up. I never really did watch it. Um, oh, you can tell this is serious business right here. 
you're hearing the ching ching, you know what's going on. Um, but I'll focus more on the actual creating of the retro. Oh. I think it was a thing that like, tripped me up there. Uh, oh yeah, Dexter's Lab is a series, a TV show, a Cartoon Network show. Um, there's probably a couple of games, but uh, this was a Game Boy Advance game. Um, and uh, yeah, effectively a collector thing. Um, yeah, I had it as a kid. I don't really know why. I think it was like the, you know, some parents or a friend of a parent or something like that. It's like, oh, you play video games. My son watches Dexter's Lab. And I proceed to show them the episode where they just swear constantly. Um, so I believe you've got to go up there. But if you're crafty, you can push the, uh, the block. Can you push it over here or is there a different block? Because that is the block. Just curious, because I know that there was a secret up there. I've completely forgotten the means of getting there. Yeah, we'll... Push this, we'll figure it out. Um, making the retro achievement set is interesting. I think the first thing you want to do is just play through the game. Understand, like, just the game from the, you know, developers intended this kind of angle. And it's a bit of a weird game because despite being a collectathon, you actually need 100% of the items in order to trigger the end cutscene. And, uh, there's no bosses or really anything to go along, so it's sort of lacking in some aspects. Um... I can push it two more. Yeah, I just gotta push it two more along. That's it. Um, by the way, I just want to note this is this level is. I love these levels that involve multiple kinds of areas. This had this like yeah, it's a nice metric GPA game. Because um, remember, this level had that outside part at the beginning as well. The Carapod 1 and 2 on the GBA. Yeah, yeah, very, very much like that. It's got jumping, but there's no verticality to the level design. It is very, like, you just jump because there's a gap and you need to be able to jump across it. Um, but it is a curious game. Some of the music is like, you know, it stayed with me. It's got this, it's actually a very fun soundtrack in the sense of uh, they tried to... Um, make it kind of orchestral but it is the GBA but it is also like well the GBA has got a pretty all right like sound um kind of processor on it so you can do stuff like that oh it's better than the Game Boy Color um I know that was a secret up here but I'm struggling to exit oh wait a minute oh what a cheeky what a cheeky spot Check that out. Oh. <laughs> Just dead monkey. What a very cheeky spot. How many secrets are in this level? Someone's going to note. There's only four. So, that's cool. Oh yes, health packs are used as a, uh, a decimal. these mp5 rounds i think they are Ooh, and a lever what does this do oh it yeah it opens up a, a a thing for later oh oh i'm glad i got this now that's cool yeah i believe there's some places that will spawn like a weapon so if you've got that weapon already then it just spawns more ammo for the later times but sometimes you find a spot and it is just the ammo even if you didn't have the weapon which we've seen already a bunch of times. So it's good to have a, a new weapon in the uh, arsenal. Yep, okay, we drop. Um, so yeah, we got a shotgun. Very nice. Uh, yeah, so after playing through the game again, um, then came the part of understanding the, like, the memory. And there are things that I'm like, okay, I've done, like, you know, I've done Clone Hero Reverse Engineering, and I've done, like, some, some other kinds of, like, stuff like that. Um, so, and I know Clone Hero is like, well, you've got a dis- you got a decompiler. You can- or a disassembler, rather. You can disassemble the, um... The, uh... You know, the, the 
Actually, no, it is a decompiler, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you take the, the uh, interpreted language code, the IL code, and you just can turn it into actual code. Here, uh, well, I'm not really turning it into code. I might maybe get into that, but I've tried doing all this by just inspecting memory and just going for that. Um, there are things that are very easy to test for. Things like, I have a, a number of lives. You just, like, check for the number. You just see, like, okay, when I die, it should now be this exact number. And that's very easy to spot. Uh, so, uh, one of the achievements I want to make is... Actually, I, I also... Someone had started this set in 2019, so quite a bunch of the ideas was his. Uh, so, but uh, some of them are mine. Some of them are mine. But he had, uh, like, get nine lives as an achievement. So I'm like, okay, easy enough. Just watch for the lives. Check that it goes up. And check that it hits nine. And also check that you don't have cheats on, and you're not in demo mode, although you don't hit nine lives in demo mode, so that's okay. Um, but yeah, checking that cheats are not on is a curious one. Fortunately, this game has a 32-bit mask full of, uh... Where it just flags individual cheats as they're on. Or at least it flags one of them at a time. When you turn on another one, it just turns off the other cheats. It just turns on one at a time. But it's still, it's a part of memory where it's like, well, if that's not zero, you gotta cheat on. So. Okay. A bit curious that you can see that already, but yeah. Uh, this is the pool from earlier, and it sort of doesn't look like there's anything going on in here yet. Oh boy, there's another statue up there. A little thuggy statue. Is thuggy an offensive name? That's just the name that I got from, like... Indiana Jones. Have I played Roller Coaster Tycoon? I have. I do very enjoy Roller Coaster Tycoon. That's actually that's one of the ones I I um when I was doing the uh the one-off games in September, that was one of the ones. Uh, was it September? It was earlier actually, August. Um, Technical Marvel. Oh boy, that one's a treat. People, the people who are doing open RCT2 are absolute freaks in understanding how that all works because like yeah yeah it's it's mostly written in, in x86 directly um i thought i saw that was open for a moment um and yeah yeah which granted also open rct2 you know they're great for understanding all of that um chris sawyer himself for writing it it's like oh that's great and yeah there's a certain degree of like you know there is some efficiency that will happen when you run or when you write things in assembly as long as you're doing it the right way uh and you won't get that um with compiling and you just you'll just never capture that so oh very fascinating game and, and yeah wonderful wonderful work wonderful game uh yeah i did sort of want to try it but unlike other games i don't really have memories of bugs or anything I apparently just did not trigger the secret for, for a hot second there. There you go, get out of there. Look at that fire is turned on up there. It's a curious fire, ain't it? So I think that door, that door is still not open, but what we've got here is that these, uh... Flames are actually... I think I turned off that one. <laughs> Whoops. Um, these flames are actually uh, revealing some invisible platforms. There we go. Yeah, you can see them. Very kind of fun way of going about it. There's some on the left, but... uh. Like, why do you need to jump on the left one? You could just jump on this one. And yep, that's a real platform that you can stand on. And then I decided to do a running jump for some reason. You don't need a running jump. Oh, well. Uh, then it started to get a bit tricky spotting the memory. Because there were things... I think the hardest thing for me to find in memory was... Beating the game. And I know it's like, oh, like, don't you just detect that, like... You know, like, you know, that you're in a cutscene. Yeah, the problem is that, um, there's 
two cutscenes in the game. One plays at the beginning, which I still did. <laughs> now, I don't know what exactly is that in memory, but it's the intro cutscene. I'm not like, too worried. Uh, oh boy. You can tell what's going on here. Get that key. Get the heck out of dodge. Oh. A little, a little bit preemptive, but sure. Sure. Um, so, in order to detect that you hit the end of the game, I really had to, you know, do my best of speedrun strat. <laughs> Maybe it was a speedrun strat. I really had to, to do the thing of, um, like, okay, I'm, I'm at the end of the game, but I haven't triggered the end of the game yet. Try and, you know hit equals a bunch of basically go, well, the end of the game hasn't triggered, so there's obviously somewhere in memory that is still the same. Also, uh, this is all mud. Also, the ceiling is coming in. Also, this, uh, you have to kind of swim through it. I don't know how this place got covered in mud. I just like chilling over on the left here because you, you don't sink that hard. <laughs> yeah, this whole place flooded in. Don't question the logic of a Tomb Raider game. <laughs> Listen, there's a guy who just like jumped off a cliff. Uh, there's these like six armed kind of statues coming to life. And uh, the most concerning part is the structural integrity of this, you know, temple. Okay. OHS is a is a real problem. And he's left his knives everywhere. Uh, so yeah, trying to find things like the the I knew the statues would come to life at some point. Oh boy! The worst part is how long ago did I save? How long ago? Mmm. Oh, these jumps. Dang it! That's what I get for not saving very often. Speed run, speed run, speed run. Did you know that the boulder would come at me? <laughs> I wish I had some of your psychic powers there. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Granted, though, like, I would really, really love... Um, like, I I don't mind auto-saves, but there is also a degree of, like... Sometimes it spoils it real hard. Or sometimes, like, what's the point in, like, insta-death traps if, you know, you can easily just save right before? Um, like, I guess if you manually know what's going on, then yeah. But, like, in theory, it's like, oh, the, the, the consequence of a death is minimized by the amount of stuff you lose, basically. That sound, that's, that's a very tautologic statement. Like, you don't want to just, like, save right before the player does one thing. You don't want to test that they can do one thing, but... You also don't want to test that they can do... ...everything with no error. Like, it's gotta be a middle ground somewhere. Um... Yeah. That's why I'm just generally against, like, quick time events. Like, why? I don't need them. Oh, look at that, I saved the game! In an appropriate spot, so that I wouldn't get caught out by a rolling boulder on the next attempt. Solaris has forced me to turn on Iron Man mode from achievements. I think all the Paradox games do that. Oh, I tried triggering it. I'm going to do it again. There it is. So now it's a lot easier. Now play strategy games only Iron Man mode because that way is more fun. Uh, my time is sometimes precious. Like, I would love to just, like, play some games not in Iron Man mode just so I can understand what's going on. And then once I know the mechanics, then I feel a bit more comfortable. Uh, they've begun lifting achievement restrictions in the last few months. I forgot which games. This one's a curious angle. I think this is like two routes that both go towards the same goal. And there's one called Monkey. And something. I think the other one had a boulder. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Thanks, Lara. Appreciate it. There's just monkeys everywhere. 
Good thing there's a... I guess it's a save crystal. It's, it's technically a save crystal in some part of the world. Oh, he's, he's chasing me. He's behind me. Get out of here, monkey. It's a bit of a drop. Good thing that uh, this wall is a ladder. Um, yeah. Once I've figured out all the memory, or at least kind of how it works, the nice thing I actually, like, kind of toyed around with is also, like, just typing in values and just seeing how the game weirdly responds to those change values. There's lots of things in this game where the value is being read every single frame to display something. Also, we're back down here. We've only got one of the keys. That's because the second key is actually activated by pulling both of these levers. I know, right? You probably were seeing these and I was like, why are you activating those levers? I just had it in my brain, but I could do it later. That opens this left door. This left door to requires a save because I don't trust myself. How many minutes are we in this level, by the way? Are we at like 30 something? 31. I swear, this is a long one. This is a lengthy boy level. And that's not counting like every time I die or reload or stuff like that. Or pause. Oh no, pausing counts. Um, also, shout out Dexter's Lab. It's got a, uh, a four byte number that's counting up once every frame, except not in pause screens. Hang on. Loading screens and stuff. So, uh, I've, I've put a leaderboard for like the game a certain amount of time, and I can literally just rely on that number. And uh, Retro Achievements knows uh, that counting every frame is a valid way of counting an achievement. Or anything, so. Easy achievement. Easy leaderboard. I do know of the speedrun of Paper Mario where you play Zelda longer than the actual Paper Mario game. It reminds me of, um... I don't know of that particular... S Maybe I do, actually. I think I might know that one. It reminds me of, a uh, Dragon Quest 3 on the Famicom. as a similar thing. You know, the heat warmer one. You put it in a different game and so you can memory flip things. And it's literally that. It's, it's it's the same principle of, you know, seeing how the game executes certain um, certain things, which, you know, maybe it does rely on another game. And if you can somehow change it and trigger it, uh, that's cool. Oh, dang. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I've dodged it. I've dodged every single, like, death, uh, uh, death trap. Good thing there's a little tiny health over there. In case you need it. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't exactly... Like, it would be yeah, a little more interesting if a bit overkill to um, decompile uh, Dexter's Lab so I can understand the actual code logic a bit more. But there's things like, oh, you know, when you change your lives, it changes the text representation every frame. As well as also, there are things like, there's a part of memory that's... Um, because you can get some, some blaster guns in the game. And there's a part of memory that's like... The projectile you shoot? Like, it's just a... I mean, it's a value, but like, you can change that value to stuff that's like, higher. And then suddenly you start shooting walls. Or aliens. You play Paper Mario until a door, then you pull out the cartridge, put in, I believe, Broker in your time, play that a bit. Until I believe you get an item or something that changes the memory value, and then you swap again, and now the door is open. Yeah, because the, the system keeps things in memory, and by design, lots of consoles, in fact, pretty much everything, doesn't zero out memory. Uh, the big reason why is for, usually for random, um, uh, random number generation. It's just like, well, you know, the easiest way to get a random number is to sample a state that you never controlled. Okay, the whole memory. So, that's how they do it. It's bound to be more intensive ways, but, uh, uh, the flip side is, uh, you don't want to, this is a very precarious bit, oh my gosh, it... the snakes are back. Ooh. Hi, how you doing? Oh, he can't reach me, he can't reach me, I'm a little far out. Cool. Um... I think there was there was one other one that I thought was like very curious why that's bound to him. Oh, this is weird. Okay, so there's two kinds of collectibles in the game. Uh, there's the DDs. DD is the sister character in the show, and uh, in the game she is into the machine and turned into 124 little tiny DDs. And you're supposed to collect them all, and she also broke all the machines in your lab, so you have to repair the machines. 
For some odd reason, when you pause the game, there's a counter showing... Ooh. When you pause the game, there's a counter showing how many DDs and how many machines you've collected. Uh, of course, since, you know, you have to collect all the DDs, there's a, um... Uh, there's a... You know, oh, and, and fix all the machines. It's like there's a, a bit mask somewhere in the game's memory, and you can spot that. So, like, every time you collect a DD, it flips a specific bit to one so that you can never collect that DD again. Um, the DDs also have a total counter that goes up by one. So, if you change the memory to. I think if you pop down here, you can spot that there's this little tiny gap. It's a very curious little gap. Secret. Is that all the secrets? I get all f I got all four of them in the long level. I found all the secrets. I feel very happy that I actually know of all these. I saw that. I saw you. I saw you. You can't hide from me. Get him out of there. Get him out. I don't need him. Anti snake society. Uh. But yeah, the total number of DDs is also counted via a number. So when you uncollect a DD by changing the memory, uh, your total counter doesn't change, so you can technically get the total counter to keep going up. But the number of machines exclusively relies on that. There is no in-game counter for the the number of machines that you. Oh, sorry. There's no in-game like integer for the number of machines you collected. Every single frame, it is always computing like it's computing you know based on the uh i think it's an eight byte bit mask um the number of machines you've uh repaired and then immediately converting it to ascii before the, the um the uh the um like frame is updated so there is no consistent point in memory that's just counting the number of machines you've repaired it's a very curious one um, so for the rich presents, uh, where I want to show the number of DDs you collected and the number of machines, the DDs can just read a value, the, uh, the machines, I'm having to do the calculation. Here's the eight addresses where all the bit masks are. Go nuts, count the bits. It works out. It's not too bad. Um, so yeah. Uh, the last set of, uh, set of things that I really wanted to, like, work on was, uh, what's an achievement that's not just, like, you know, the obvious, beating the game. Uh, and the thing I've, I'm sort of leaning towards, and I'm, I've figured out how to implement it for the first world, so it shouldn't, you know, be too different for the rest, is, uh, defeating all the enemies in a world without dying. Now, in order to, okay, the way the game's structured is that there's eight worlds, and each world consists of four levels that have a door that, you know, exits from one level to the next. But you can also go back through that door if you wanted to just go back a level. Uh, lots of the levels have keys and switches that you activate. And uh, technically, um, you know, when you go backwards, you can't exactly go back that far. Like, I, I don't know why it's like, oh, you know, like, you, uh, you unlock this gate to get to the level, and then you, like, go back, and that gate is just locked, and you can't unlock it from the side you're on, so it's like, what's the point? Um, but in theory, you could go back and kill an enemy again, if it's on, you know, if it's not that far back. Um, this is a bit of a curious kind of, uh, area here, and this, this is just, like, new player trap. So you gotta push this one block, and then the second block can be pushed. Now you can spot that on my left there's another block that can be pushed. But you wanna keep pushing the second one. And then there's a fourth block. Na nah. Ignore that one. There's a fifth block. No 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 no. Ignore that one. And fortunately, there's no more blocks. But this looks like it continues on. Why are we ignoring these blocks? So push the fifth block forward. And uh, there's no extra block on the other side. This is just, I know the puzzle off the top of my head. The calculation is uh, because they had limited memory. 
Nah, there's a lot there's a lot of zero space in memory. They they really could have just I mean, all you gotta do is just store it as like you know, one byte or two bytes if you really wanted to, because a lot of the things in that game are just two byte values when they don't need to be. Like enemy health. It's like I've never seen the enemy health be more than like eighty as an integer. But for some odd reason I store it as two bytes all the time. Um Yeah, yeah, I assume Oh that's fun. The music was the tell before I even knew the boulders were there. Uh, drop down into water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's it's interesting. Oh, did I really get? Oh, I got hit by the the thing because this dropped down into the tunnel that we were in before, and that's actually where we need to be. So. You don't lose your health that quickly to the poison. <sighs> no, there's been there's been other music. It's been a while since there's been music, but there's there's been other music. All that work just to put water into this pit. Just to put water in here. So that we can pull this lever, because this is a water only lever. <laughs> and swim through, and finally, that's key number two. We've been in this level for like an hour, oh, maybe not an hour, but like 50 minutes at least. And it still goes on, there's still a bit to this level left. Okay, time to use the small med pack. Also for reference, if, if anyone's like, oh, you know, why is the text that small? Uh, I'm on 1024 by 768. <laughs> Just for note, someone's gonna ask. You can adjust the resolution in game, and it's just that the UI doesn't scale, so it's like, I don't know, different people are gonna have the UI at different, you know, amounts. Put the key of Ganesha into the key of Ganesha slot. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm curious why the game is like that, but it's, it's not that bad, because ultimately I only need the number of machines for this one thing. If I want to check that the player has, you know, gotten every machine, I just check the specific bits. Um, so I'm checking it per world. Seems to be the best way of going about it. Um, very interestingly, uh, the bits, like, uh, let's count the DDs. Every level has, has four DDs. And, um, well, except for the second to last one. Uh, but, so, 32 levels, four bits per level, 128 bits. 16 bytes. Easy enough. I don't know how you can climb that without taking a little bit of a tap there. Um, so, yeah, 16, 16 bytes, which, nice and easy. And yes, the game does store all 128 bits, all 100, well, 124 bits, really, but yeah, in 16 bytes contiguously. But interestingly, the four bits for each level are not just like in a half a byte. I think, is this the block? Yeah, this is just, you just gotta spot that that's a block that you can pull. I think you can spot it if, like, the lighting is, like, different, but I don't know, man. I don't think the lighting's different here. Um. Uh. But yeah, you think that the four DDs in a level are next to each other, and the answer is no. D DD number one for the first level is... The first bit of the first, you know, byte, okay. But DD number two of the first level is four bytes later. It's the first bit of the fifth byte. Oh, I knew they'd do that. I got caught out by that like three times while practicing that. I remember that off the top of my head. Like these boulders just come at you when you don't expect. Because there's no ramp. I'm not expecting that. A little, little bit of flame grilling as well. Think it looking good. Oh. Take two. Round two. Oh, you got a hit on me. Get him in the back, get him in the back. Uh, 
Um, so yeah, it's just curious how the how the game works. Uh, the last thing is, of course, yeah, making the actual achievements. Uh, all that stuff is pretty pretty fine, but um, yeah, making the achievement for defeating all the enemies is rather curious. There's definitely a you know a pattern you can use for when an enemy loses his health. Um, but the, the curious thing is that a lot of these achievements, it's not as, like, straightforward as I'd want it to be, because, um, first of all, annoyingly, for retro achievements... Oh, man, I've been actually taking damage from these guys. Annoyingly, for retro achievements, I can't interpret a, um... I can't interpret a, uh, byte as signed or unsigned, or, or a 16-bit value as signed or unsigned, and I'd really like to, um, because I would love to say that their health is below zero. But unfortunately, because their health underflows in terms of the bits, because negative numbers are like... So say you have a two-byte value, um, zero is zero. And zero is zero for every number, really. That's a consistent thing I think everyone's got. Um, he picked up his sword. This other guy should activate. There should be two of them. Oh well. His loss. Oh, the health down here. Why was it spinning? Why was the health spinning there? Oh. Did he come, did he come to life? Nope. I'm just hearing noises in my head. I think you might activate if I walk up here. There you go. So I have an idea. I'm gonna see if this idea works. Which is... Hmm. I gotta take out this guy. Walk through here. Is this guy gonna try and walk through the fire? I think he's walking away. He doesn't. He doesn't want me there. Hi. How you doing? How you doing? You good? You cool? Maybe he'll, he'll like coming over here. There you go. Ooh. He doesn't want to come in the fire. Oh well, I saw a thing saying you could get him to go in the fire. Oh well. Just taking out the old fashioned way. I love these, uh, these god rays. I mean, they're very, like, you know. They're easy, but they are, like, you know, a transparency kind of just layer there. And transparency is a relatively new thing at this time. At least beyond being completely opaque and completely transparent. be like a certain kind of color and if you tried drawing that color it would just be like oh okay well just don't draw it come on come on pop it i'd love to use the shotgun but the problem is i'm just gonna you know waste a lot of my ammo shooting him directly he also drops a sword a little golden banana sword here um so yeah so so a negative number in signed land is uh, from like 0x 8000 up to 0x FFFF. Um, you gotta put the, the swords in this statue here. The scimitar, if you will. There you go, pop it in. Let's pop the other one in. It's got some funky eyes, I'll tell you that. Pop it in. And that opens the door. Where you'll be pleased to know we have finally left that room. The level is still going. <laughs> is, that, is that magnum ammo down here? This is a this is a strangely long level. Like when I when I do a little bit of a, like replaying of uh, the other levels just to prep myself a little bit, I'm gonna be very very curious if any level comes close to the length of this one. And this is just this is just level two, man. This is just, oh, so long. 
There we go. Well, but I know that levels three and four aren't as long, and I do want to see if I can try and cram them out. I do know the game Driver. I've played the game Driver. That one's got some notorious stuff. Uh, that guy is, um, he's uh, doing the Jesus pose. He's a holy man. Ba -na -ba -na -ba -na -ba. I remember Driver had some really, uh, the last level was really hard because, um, I don't, I don't think I played every level in the sense of I didn't do all the alternate paths. So I do need to go back. The tutorial, oh! Well, the tu I don't think the tutorial was the hardest level in the game, but it is certainly a filter because it's just like, what on earth? The mandatory, yeah, yeah, it's mandatory. And you've got to understand so many mechanics with zero, like, prep. And, uh, I get, you know, you get to replay the tutorial over and over again, but it's like, oh. And yet, yeah, it, like, the driving is weird. The parts, like, later in the game, because your car has a health bar, and you're basically, like, you get rammed by everything. And there's a certain level later, and I remember listening to Yes, Open Your Eyes at the same point in time for the first time. And I hate that album. I really did hate that album. So I'm sort of associating my head, like, you know, bad vibes all around, but I remember really struggling. Yeah, the last level is like a chase. It's like you're basically going from like the east side of the level all the way to the west or something. And there's just police cars flinging themselves at you. They travel double the speed and they go over the San Francisco jumps and they just go flying. Uh, this guy is not a holy man, but he is uh, still chilled up here. Oh, he's got a, like a vertical line. He's uh, a split personality. That's kind of... <laughs> yeah. Look at that, a hole in the floor. Who would have seen that coming? Let's, uh, let's save the game. Can I go through here? Yes. It's a bit dark. Oh, I think it's a crushing ceiling. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, uh. There we go. So there's three more keys to acquire, but fortunately they're not as far away, these keys. In fact, actually, I think, you know, that's one of them, and the other two are just over here, so. But yeah, oh boy, this is a long level. Long, large level that's doing a lot of stuff. And you get a little save crystal here. Huh. Um, but yeah, oh, Driver 1 is such a filter. Um, just at that tutorial and various levels as you go along. I am just a fish. This is a, you got a, this is a little spike wall there and it's just drawing you in. You just gotta hit both levers from the depths of Iron Bread. Oh, I've seen, um, yeah, I have seen the Iron Fish. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't remember I am Jesus Christ. What's going on with that one? Uh, here we go. Pull both levers. That sort of... I think it... Does it completely kill the water currents? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Completely killing the water currents lets you finally grab a key here. That's only two keys. Oh, when did I pick up the third one? I forgot. <laughs> Maybe it was earlier. It's funny, but they crafted some of the environments they crafted for I Am Fish. I always like devs that reuse stuff for different games. And they're like, completely different games, but it's like, oh, okay, sure. There we go. Hop, hop, skip, and a jump. Final key. And here we go. We're actually out of the level now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this one was a doozy. Slide your way out. Funny how she do be floating along. And he apparently has the force. <laughs> I 
<laughs> the best way to avoid something is just to lay flat on your back. Also, this guy has lots of means of transportation and decides to do the raft down the river approach. So hey, check it out. What a curious little item that he's left here. He had the quad bike! So there's that level 50, 4 minutes 50. That is a, a doozy long level. So welcome to level 3, which I will keep going on because, uh, the River Ganges, or Ganges, or Janges, or Jangas. The letter G is the worst thing ever. Before we do the, the quad bike, there's actually a secret if you just try and like, follow him on foot. Because you use the quad bike to launch into there, but if you're astute, you'll spot a ladder right here. What a, what a nifty little just secret down here. But it gets better, because it's not like just like, oh, you climb over to this ledge. It's like, okay, and then you gotta jump over here. Okay, sure. Oh, wait. Okay. Don't do what I did, because you're gonna get <laughs> piranhaed. And the best part, you can spot every single one of these ledges is just a little bit too high. Where does this go if you just keep like riding it all the way down? Where does this actually go? I'm curious. Gan Ganges, like, jive. Or is that give? <laughs> jive, I don't know why I read that as jive. I'm actually curious where this river takes you, because, like, you can see it's it's pushing me along. I'm flowing past so many of these piranha nests. Oh, oh, oh. I juked them out, I juked them. Oh, there's piranhas everywhere though, I'll tell you that. Oh my gosh, that's actually the end of the level, right here. Oh, but you caught out. You caught out right at the end. Oh, <laughs> how terrifying. G is not ambiguous in pronunciation. Yeah, Genghis. All right, once more with feeling. That is, that is fun and curious that the river literally just flows to the whole level, because you're not even going to see the river for most of it. Okay, let's, uh, let's do this jump a bit better this time. There we go. But you saw that it was like six or seven jumps. Like, just walking down here. And they're all just a little bit too high to be able to climb out of. Bit, bit weird when you're on an angle. I think that's a good point to save, just as I'm going along. Um, yeah, so hopefully I can nail out these achievements in the next week. Uh, but they'll be in an unofficial set for a bit because someone's going to go through, approve them, uh, get some play testing as well. Um, there's probably a level of code quality that I'm probably not meeting. Like, there's. The code isn't, like, too long. You just write a bunch of instructions, and the instructions uh, define some logic that you can use. But, yeah, this is a secret all the way down here. And then I love this, like, this part right here. Where it's like... <laughs> Good job. Good job. I love this part. Impales myself on spikes. Um... I did that again. <laughs> uh, as for playing the game on stream, yeah, it will happen at some point. Um, I, I mentioned that there's only seven streams left of the week, this being the seventh last, oh sorry, of the, there's only one stream left of the week, seven of the year, because there's going to be four months of November, and then uh, three, sorry, oh my gosh, I can, I can say the time of day right. There'll be three, four weeks in November. This being the first one, November 6th, we'll have November 13, November 20, 27, and then we'll be in December. I'm pretty sure I get the 2nd, the 9th, and the s no. I get the 4th, the 11th, and the 18th. 
And then the next one is literally Christmas Day, and I'm not streaming on Christmas Day. <laughs> I might be streaming on New Year's Day. But that's after the festivities. Uh, you gotta climb your way back out, though, of uh, this kind of stuff, so... Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll probably take like a week off, just... Christmas Day! Why would I stream on Christmas Day? I say that, but I know full well that, like, you know, you'll go to, like, Twitch.tv and you'll just see, like, there's people streaming on Christmas Day, and it's like... I don't know, I've, I've never, I've never thought, I've never considered, like, streaming on Christmas Day. I've done, like, other public holidays, but it's just, like, because it's like, oh, it's just normal public holiday. But it's like, Christmas, you're with the family. Like, if you're not with the family, get with the family, guys. Christmas is family, just like Halloween is about family. Or it's Valentine's Day, where it's not family. But, or it could be family. You gotta propose, you know? Um, yeah, hopefully I can get those achievements out, and uh, then maybe sometime next year I play the game. And then I can be like, ooh, this is <laughs> developer commentary. What a curious thing. There's not much to really say, or at least not many things that I actually know about how the game is really working. I just know this very, very solid block of memory full of, like, the all-game state, basically. So, uh, but it's been good fun. Uh, the, the main thing game, the main game I actually really wanted to, to, uh, do achievements for was Guitar Hero World Tour, because I know I played that when I ton as a younger lad and they don't even have it hashed let alone anyone asking to make achievements for it but the downside is you will you can't do playstation 2 games as a junior developer or as a first time developer um you can as a junior but just not for your first one and i completely get why because i'm wrestling myself on the logic finding stuff in memory is fine but that's because i've like i've done this before in other contexts and yeah, just, just understand the whole process with a simpler and shorter game is better, so. Uh, okay, you've been long awaited, anticipated, finally we can ride the quad bike. I think I know off the top of my head, this level actually, like... a bit interesting how the quad bike section is. Uh, but it's kind of fun because uh, if you botch up a jump, Lara literally falls into a pit and explodes. She is super dead. So you don't wanna you don't wanna fall into a pit and explode. You wanna you wanna try and live throughout the whole level. Oop. It looks like it controls a little jank, but it's not that bad. It's actually not that bad. Oh, it's a bit bad when you don't know where you're going. They put flares down there. That's the thing. I do I stop and just pick up collectibles everywhere? The answer is possibly, because I know you can just zoom through this whole level, you really don't have to get off the quad. Oh. I think if the quad bike dies, even if you are somehow off the quad bike, it's like, you know, with this death, the, the you know, destiny will never succeed. Like that kind of like moment. You can't control your rotation in air though, so if you're spinning, you're just gonna spin. That was a bit of a spinala in uh, this morning's race. Or, uh, technically, it was the formation lap. Sorry, Charles. I do hope... Dude, he sounds so, so bad. He sounds so sad whenever it's like, you know, why why am I so unlucky? Why am I so unlucky? Legit. Legit, he is... Uh, I feel real bad for him, because, like, he legit shouldn't be, like... Struggling this hard. I get it if you're like... Oof. Hit my head on the roof and I just didn't get the distance. Um, you know, like, yeah, some of it is like, yeah, you know, your Ferrari is not as competitive in some cases. Um, but then on the other hand, it's like, yeah, like, legit, like... Your car shouldn't have a hydraulic failure in the formation lap. There's something weird going on there, bro. Um... I, I see ya. I see a snake. Get him out of there. It's just not even animating anything below, like, the top, like, part of the snake there. So, 
It's like motorbike noises outside. I really would love to live in like a much more like quiet location. Just because legit like just noisy car traffic. But Oh he got me, he got me. I got I fell for another snake. Um so I realize I spent a lot of my topics uh, on streams talking about uh, technology, and a lot of that technology comes downstream from um, from some of the tech channels, some of those... Actually, like, as much as I give flack for Reddit, hey, you know, like, well, I guess it's probably not an exclusively Reddit thing. Also, all this just to be able to push a, push a button on the other side so I can keep going. What a very fancy button. Let's get on the quad bike, and let's have a save, just so I don't have to do that again. Uh, so it is at this point that I think the level splits into two. And you basically get, like, two paths here, where you can, like, travel down here and jump over some gaps. Uh, doo -doo 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 I think you go through this hole, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just monkeys everywhere. You gotta murder every monkey, apparently. I sort of want to show both bars, but I'm also like, am I pressed for time? It's a maybe. This is goodies, but this isn't... Oh, get out of here with that. Get him out of here. This is Uzi ammo. I'm just gonna reset and go the other way at some point. Where am I going? Uh, but yeah, no, I talk about, like, technology channels a lot. Um, and, uh, in particular, I feel like I always have lots of, uh... Uh, I'm gonna phrase it as ammunition. As in... Uh, I am a, a, just a subscriber, just, like, I follow Hardware Unboxed, and it seems that nearly every week, there's always something where I'm like, ooh, ah, what a very curious thing to say, ooh, ah, why is this door not opening? I didn't go this way before, so maybe I just really don't know where I'm going. Maybe there's something up here, maybe there's something up here. Um... Four snake pit. How about, let's go the other way. Let's go the other way. I like the other way more. It's cool. But it is curious that, like, this level just splits into two. Like, you get two different options here. And you can run over monkeys whichever way you go, so... You get a gap here and then a really curious, just, combination of gaps and drops all over the place. Um, and I always feel bad whenever I'm like, oh, you know, like, I rip into these hardware reviewers or Reddit people. It, but it is more that, like, you know, everyone's, well, I guess, I guess, is, is hardware unboxed as a, as a authority. I like how I lent left there somehow. <laughs> that was, uh, that was a bit curious. But, uh, I, I always feel like this degree of, like, imposterism, uh, both in and out, as in, I don't believe I am particularly knowledgeable on everything, so a lot of things are just, like, added from experience, or just from things I've read, and I need to look more into it, or stuff like that. Um, a hardware reviewer, uh, or, or a channel dedicated to reviewing hardware, um, will be a bit more, you know, hey, more of this is from our own testing, and we have our own testing metric. It is, uh, at the point, though, where it's like, are they accurate, or are they providing coverage? Uh, for, like, do, are they representing me, I guess is the, the way I would describe it. So I like this room, by the way, I just want to add. So it's like, you hop up here, and then it's like... You can see a little save crystal over there, as well as, like... All this stuff. Oh, 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 oh! 
Yeah, there's more river over here. Um, but I love this, like, it looks so, like, so jank and narrow, but trust me, this is, this is, uh, the intended path that the quad bike must go on around this little cliff space. Get it over there. I swear, legit. Legit, that's, that's where this was meant to go. <laughs> oh, it's so good. So cool. I love how because you got all these like, kind of tree foliage, you know, obscuring the path, it's like, ooh, you know, it looks fancy. Even when it is still mostly the same engine as, you know, the previous games. Yeah. Uh, so case in point, <laughs> sorry hardware unbox, I'm gonna rip into you some more. I do appreciate some of the work, so I think I just don't show it. I don't like point it out as often as maybe, maybe I should, like, it's just that there's things, like they say, where I've got a recent podcast episode where they're like, is 30 FPS unplayable? And, uh, they make a note in the, in the video that, um, I think the end conclusion is perhaps unplayable is not the best term to use because technically any game is playable if you can try hard enough. Um, and like, I certainly agree to that. It's like calling a game unplayable because it's at 30 FPS is not very good. Um, not, uh, you know... Yeah, it doesn't really mean anything, um, because it's like, oh, I can play it. I get that it is subjective, as in you wouldn't want to be playing a game at 30 FPS. Uh, and they mention in the video, they don't make a lot of mention as to, like, what the developer creates as options, but I think the best games are the ones that cater to both, as in they look good and they can run well for how they look and you can turn down the settings and run them at the frame rate that you want to and sometimes the game looks good and runs really good right off the bat and then you don't really need to worry about any of that uh but sometimes it's like ah oh, you know like it it uh like what's a what's a good example of a game that like is this a jump that i can do I think it is, actually. Oh, are those condors? Get them out of here! Vultures. Get them out of here, I don't want them. Like these little platforms over there, like, oh. Santa Row 4 allowed to scale down your resolution. <laughs> yeah, scaling down the resolution is a, a curious one. Um, so, but I guess, like, yeah, that's an important, like, point of... You know, we want to be able to run the games at the, the frame rate we want and then have it look as good as, you know, it can while- Oh! was part of the Pokemon release. Oh! You had to escape and gates were closing. I'm gonna pause before that jump next time because that, that was a bit of a gnarly jump. I guess I can also take the bike down here. Just climb back up. They messed up and they closed faster on high. They, it was resolution dependent? What a strange thing. Instead of doing something sensible, I turned all the way down and played five minutes of Star Fox. <laughs> that makes sense, yeah. What a strange thing for it to be, like, resolution dependent. That's a strange one. That's a new one. Um, but yeah, like, ultimately, you know, if the game can run... I mean, I want the game to look at its best. You're escaping in a spaceship and kind of look like... Oh, yeah, yeah, like the gates, yeah. Star Wars game where you're on the Death Star. The old arcade game where all the... Was it Vector based, the very old one? Yeah, the music's back! I have to briefly interrupt it because i got to pause. Just to save here, but... Thank you, music. Alright, take two on the jump. 
it just it looks like it's right there. Goodbye, music. It looks like you can do it, but it's just that bit out of reach. How much longer? Uh, like this level isn't much longer, and then the next level is probably just as long. Okay, I'm I'm giving up on this jump. Um, so I'll definitely be done before the three hours. I can be certain of that. Um, I sort of want to see if I can get every world as one stream. I'm not confident on that, but it'd be cool. It'd be cool if I could do that. Um, because yeah, every world is about the same length. There's, uh, five worlds in the game. Um, and, uh, one of them is three levels, but all the rest are four. Gonna run over some more monkeys. Heck yeah. There's the river again. Take me to the river. And, uh, here we are. We're actually at just the last part of the level. This is where the river dropped us off at. And uh, I guess there's just no way to... Hi there, camera. I guess there's no way to climb up. Because this ledge is just a little bit too high up. And that ledge is a little too high up. So now we're just gonna... Well, I guess in theory you can jump, but... Why jump when you can climb, you know? Oh, that vulture wasn't there a second ago. I saw him. Problem is, there's a bunch. I just all spawned. Um, so to me, is 30 FPS unplayable? Well, as someone who's been playing a game that only runs at 30 FPS for the last 2 hours and 10 minutes, um, no. And, and I play lots of retro games, and it's just like, that's... That's just what, you know, was always the case. Um... What I did want, what I do want, is for the game to not look bad while it's running at 30. Uh, this game looks really good. It runs at 30, it, it would be better, but it looks good. Um, I feel like there's a lot of games on like the PlayStation 1, um, same boat as well. And there's other games like, I, I think Zelda Ocarina of Time, it runs at 20. It's, it's just consistent 20. Um, you can also play at 10. Yeah, like, yeah. 10 starts to get pushy for me, but in general, it's like, I don't think I could really draw a line at the number of FPS um, as being unplayable, because in theory, I can get used to and play at really any frame rate. And, um, and in the video, they were like, oh, you know, like, once you're playing at 144, you'll never want to go back to 60. And I'm like, I don't know, I'm a bit of a weirdo. It's weird as well, because, like, I don't own, uh, like, the only... I own Nintendo consoles, but I don't own... How many secrets do we have? Two out of five. <laughs> I got the first one, and this is basically the last one. So it's 13 old, old me playing Titan Quest on an underspec PC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there's, there's, like, so many games out there, or, like, so many people out there who are running on underspec components, and it's just, like, yeah, like, you know, they're going to have that kind of you know, a kind of experience. And it's not to say that, you know, they didn't cater for that in the Hardware Unbox video, but also it's their podcast, so it's a bit more off the cuff, uh, sorry, uh, a bit more spur of the moment discussion. So, uh, was that something in the middle there? Nah. But uh, there's the raft. Just fell down here. He rode it all the way, and then he was like, nah, I'm bailing right here. Oops. Jump out. Oh, come on. A very, very jank way to climb out. This ledge will be the better one to climb out on. Um, now, of course, the context is Alan Wake 2, which is weird that that one's coming up a bit more and more, but I think it is just because it has a rather high, low requirement. The minimum specs are rather demanding. But, it does look good while you're doing it. But, it also runs at a bit of a weird resolution, or sorry, a bit of a weird um, frame rate. It's a little lower than some people would like. And I get that mm, for people on those cards, there's no way to tweak it. Yeah, see, not as long a level, 16 minutes. Did you know Harry Potter 3 on the PC with only 256 instead of the minimum 512 megs of RAM? Only makes loading screens take ages, but the game itself runs pretty well. That's, that's rather interesting. And that makes sense as well, because it's like sometimes like loading screens are just like decompressing stuff. So it's like, eventually it's like, 
you've read the you know the bytes off disk and then you've unpacked the bytes into stuff because sometimes it's a lot more efficient for your disk than to be you know reading bursts at a time uh this level starts off and is mostly a labyrinth it's not a very long labyrinth but it is a labyrinth nonetheless <laughs> Pick up some flares. Oh my gosh, I've <laughs> lost track of the, the, the ledge. Um, yeah, I, like, on the flip side, and I don't, I, I'm not being devil's advocate, but, like, legitimately, there's a degree of there should always be a, a way to play a game at a faster frame rate, unless it's literally, like, well, not even unless... Like, I think every game should be designed to have an unlocked, or at least... No, no, yeah, yeah, go with an unlocked frame rate. There's a lot of games where it's like, they can do 144 hertz, but they they don't work at like 200. And it's like, we're, we're in the, uh, the realm where some people are getting 500 hertz monitors. And it's like, I would love for them to always have that support. Ooh. The need for speed from the early 2010s. Which one? Most Wanted? Or, uh... The better one, Shift 2. When it was capped at 30 if you unchecked it. Oh! Yeah! Oh! I'm trying to recall the particular one. Not Most Wanted. Most Wanted was decent. I'm not the biggest fan of Most Wanted 2012. 2005? I played that a few months ago and I'm like, yeah, that game is still great. But 2012, mm, Total Biscuit. Oh, yeah. Man, I miss Total Biscuit, man. There have there have not been, like, that many YouTubers that have been, like, as real as that guy. And uh, it's a shame that there's no one who, you know, continues his legacy quite as well as, uh, as he could. So, I do miss him. Now I'm sad. Oh, snakes. Never mind, I'm not sad anymore. Oh, actual Need for Speed. Need for Speed 2015. I always stick a year on any game that just self-titles itself. Tomb Raider 2013. Doom 2016. Prey 2017. Uh, Hitman 2016. God of War 2018. Um, trying to think, what's another one? What's another one? Top of my head. I'm about to watch my, uh, my movie of the week thing, Fast and Furious. And, uh, that's the fourth one, so I just internally call it hitman 2016 is actually the official title well it was the official title and now it's hitman world of assassination and then the, yeah yeah you're right they call it hitman 2 and hitman 3 and uh hitman the old hitman 2 had a subtitle and hitman 3 was never called hitman 3 it was called hitman contracts so i was at least you had that one but hitman 2 no nah, man that's confusing What's it meant to? Was it, Because uh... the first one was just called Codename 47 Hitman. This is a bit of a drop. It's all about descending in this area. But I've completely forgotten where you go. So I'm just going to keep meandering around and then we'll eventually, we'll eventually find it. Um... Tomb Raider, nah man, that, that, and Need for Speed, and Doom, it's like, come on, there is a game called exactly that, and Prey, Prey is the worst one, because it's not even related, I actually had a, I had a bit of a chat to this about, my, uh, to my mates, like, earlier, I'm like, literally, if they called Prey 2017 Psycho Shock, that would have sold the game so much more than it did, because that game did not sell as well as it should have, look at that, it's a little, little pit, wonder where it wants us to go. I like I didn't save over the first save, but okay. I love how we just drop down, launch the flare, and then it's like, ooh, ooh. Just snakes over. I heard about, uh, they apparently it's not supposed to be called Prey, but it's used to decide. Time they decide not to make a procedure and bank on the name. It's, yeah, it's one of the worst naming decisions I can think of. Like, 
and probably that's a bit of a, you know, a superlative. Oh yeah, it annoyed everyone, and and you know, I got I got a bolt, I got a bolt, I got a bolt. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, you got a duck, you got a duck. No. Oh. Dang it. <laughs> um. But yeah. Oh, like it. Yeah, if they called it Psycho Shock, that would have been a super accurate name because it would have encouraged players. You know, who enjoy Bioshock and System Shock, and that accurately describes the, you know, the type of game, and it would have, like, that would have just sold it. I don't know why they called it Prey, other than, hey guys, were you excited about the Prey from 11 years ago, despite the fact that it's not developed by the same developer at all? And then they played it, and it wasn't even related. Like, it'd be like if you bought, like, a Tomb Raider game. And then it's like, instead of like raiding tombs, you know, you just, I, this is a terrible analogy because I know that the original game is like this. My point being, imagine if uh, people had uh, supernatural powers and started floating and throwing fireballs at you. Good thing I've got a shotgun. Uh, this guy's casually here and he also turns the room into blood. He goes around and he starts throwing fireballs everywhere, and this might set you on fire if you're not careful, but you're just going to touch the water, I guess. It's not that bad. It's really not that bad. Probably because they expect you to do this with just the pistols as well. Very, very nice, though. That is effectively it for the first world. Um, we've got a cutscene. Which will explain a little bit more. Also, there was a grenade launcher just here. Which is very, very fun. Uh, didn't really get to use it though, because I didn't stop and pick it up. Also, is that the title screen music? Well, it's not THE title screen music, but the tune's in there. Walk over to the center here and pick up... ...this wonderful stone. We'll get a cutscene. I noticed there's lip syncing in this cutscene as well. It's incredible. I don't want to be misrepresented by that retarded research you've just been with. Oh, the uh, 90s when you could I toss know. around that word. I can't converse <laughs> with Tony myself, but I saw you were doing a rather more creditable job, I think. Indeed, I'm inspired. I'd like to offer you other work. What? Shoot the breeze with some of your other boys? No thanks. Fortunately, they were the only lab rats we let loose into the field. No. My request is for three other artifacts like this. The Infada tribe only had one artifact of this type. It's unique. Anyway, what would your interest in it be? I'll show you. It's not from India. Rather, What's a briefcase it computers? Am I right? Block, oh, it's a little a tiny laptop. We were once settled there many, many years ago. See that? That's unique. An unknown material. So how did it end up here? Unobtainium. Formed from the planets. Sculpted by Polynesians. Distributed by goons. Our excavations by goons. and investigations have led us to this. A I want to meet someone who legitimately has that accent. And just ask them like every single quote. August 14th, 1834. This voyage is getting too boring for me to go Oh dang. What are we, 189 we years off? Ooh. The only tales I'll have to tell are hours of bird watching, picking and pressing flowers, following them blasphemous ideas of the governor, Darwin. Governor. But this don't even concern me now. I just want food. Something more than vegetable broth in me. Today we five have made a pact. The only sampling we're going to be doing is for meat. Pure, solid, blood-rich meat. You know, my classic researchers. So it's like, ah, yes, no, we're 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 researching these animals. The snow's run out. The tracks have gone. Just keep going. We're on its trail. Listen, I would never trust a place with an ice bridge like this. One, it'd be crazy slippery, like legit. And two, like. Whew. You can tell what's gonna happen. <laughs> There's something here. Look, another one. What do you reckon they were? 
Awesome. When there is a totem, it's like, ooh. Too late. There's only four. None for you. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> very, very dag. You gotta be kind to the doggos. Don't tease a guy. Apparently the sharks. <laughs> oh, there he goes. Ah, oh, rip the dog. Rip the dog. At least that was a convenient exit. How you doing, Fredrickson? Oh. <laughs> Nobody better say nothing about this to the governor. Else we'll be back having to hunt down that creature for his samples. Paul fell down a crevasse, okay? Okay, Stephen. Dude, I'm older than Paul. Stephen was to be the only survivor of the four. When he arrived back in London, he superstitiously sold off his artifact, having seen his pals murdered or killed with theirs. One here in India, one in the South Pacific, and one in Nevada. The places where I'd like you to go. Sounds good to me. So, that's our, pr our premise for the game. It's a world journey where, uh, oh, there's the, the thing. Six man, very, very short level, but it's a world journey. We have, uh, we've done the level in India, which has that dot there that we can't see. And we now have the South Pacific Islands, Nevada, and London left to, uh, you know, investigate. All of these will have one piece of the puzzle. And uh, once we get all three, we unlock the ability to travel to the last world. Um, I shall tease you a little bit. We shall go to Nevada first. And uh, the strong reason, and Stella has the, the same uh, kind of point, which is uh, you get you get um, half-lifed when you go to Nevada. So you might as well go to Nevada first so you don't get half-lifed for the rest. But we'll demonstrate that next stream. Uh, so that's the whole India part of the game. I hope you all appreciated the stream, and uh, with that, I would like to thank you very, very, very much for watching. So yeah, if you liked parts of the stream, or, or bits that I talked about, or me ranting about hardware unboxed, or any of the stuff, uh, you can follow, or like, or that kind of stuff. I'm on YouTube as well, so if you missed bits of this, yeah, we, we, we beat 150 minutes. It's a, this is the good length. This is the good, the good length. Almost speedrun pace. Is this speed? Nah, no, the speedrun would be done with the game in two hours right yeah that's <laughs> sub 230 that last level was pretty quick though there's really not that much left in that last level though like that lo that last level was pretty small but the second one oh the second one was massive so um, yeah if you missed parts of this uh the vod will be on youtube fairly soon we'll see um youtube takes forever to process the videos and uh yeah other than that stay safe eat your greens i'll be back here next week doing more of this and also maybe that um that uh shadow man bonus video will be on youtube at some point i'm not promising it but it will be on youtube so all right see you fellas bye bye